Hey there, I wanna share with you the one thought that we've been able to share with patients that's helped them to be able to shift the way they approach POTS in a way they can take a two year POTS history where they've seen everybody and shrink down that treatment to recovery in as little as a month. So my name is Dr. Nathan Kaiser. I'm a chiropractic neurologist and I help people with brain injuries and autonomic syndromes get back into their life again. I thought the best way to share this topic would be to talk about a story, a patient that we saw recently. She came in, she's, she was 21 years old, two year history, so you do the math. She was 19 when this happened, she was at college. And she's now, or she was now in a position where she was essentially in what we call POTS purgatory, where she's kind of life stalled back in her childhood bedroom, um, not able to kind of do normal life, right? So mostly spends time in a room, can't go out with friends, can't go do social things, can't drive can't go to school, all the things that, you, that you're that you kind of used to hearing. And they were because she had symptoms. I mean, the symptoms are not uncommon. Headaches, lightheadedness, severe brain fog, severe fatigue, and then fatigue and exhaustion gets worse with activity. And these are things that are, that are really common in this group. All of these things have been attributed to the tachycardia that she experiences when she stands up, also known as POTS. So she's seen different specialists, cardiology, GP, neurology. She tried a lot of different medications. Nothing really seemed to hit the mark. So when I first saw her, she came in on the recommendation of someone else that had been in and they had spoken with her mother and she was like a very, um, she wasn't like excited to come, right? I was I was one of the doctors on the parade of doctors that she had seen over the last couple of years. So didn't feel super confident about what was gonna happen, but someone recommended they come, mom drug her, she came. So she came into the office and we went through the history and I'm going through the things that are going. And I'm realizing kind of based on the symptoms that she has, we probably haven't covered one of the key variables in getting to the cause of what she was dealing with. So I just asked her, you know, she'd done a tilt test, she'd done all these things. I'm looking through her medical records. I was like, what is your, what is your blood pressure like when you do all of these things? And then she looked at me, she looked at me like I was a confused one. She's like, Brett, my problem is my heart rate. And I was like, yeah, yeah. Also, let's look at like what's going on with the actual blood flow. So a lot of the symptoms you're describing are symptoms that happen when people don't have blood flow to their brain and they become more fatigable. They have a hard time doing things that are neurological in basis. So she kind of, oh, okay. So from that point, we decided to look a little bit deeper. So we reran all the tests, but we reran them looking at both blood pressure in her body, but also the blood flow in her head. And then we looked at some of the things that go with that, with breathing, with the way that she expels carbon dioxide, all of those things that help give a clearer picture of what blood flow looks like. So actually, once we got a clearer understanding of blood flow, we realized that she was actually in one portion of her brain in the left middle cerebral artery. She was actually having a severe drop of blood flow when she was standing up, which was leading to all these other symptoms as she was going along. And we hadn't really pinned that down, but once we were able to pin it down, then we could kind of reset the protocol or reset how do we solve this problem. And we were able to do things that within a week we could see a change in the blood pressure in her head or the blood flow in her brain. And we could see that she started to feel more energy and could do more things. And we just kept pulling that thread and pushing and pushing until eventually, after about a month, she was able to report back and say she had started driving. She was working out, which is pretty cool because she was working out and it wasn't like tanking her. She was actually feeling good which is really cool. She was now starting to look at going back to school in the next semester, and she was able to go out to dinner with her friends, which is pretty sweet. And along the way, as we're tracking this, we can track the blood flow improving, we can see the trajectory of where she's going, and then support her in that way. So just kind of summarize that back again. By taking a little bit further look and changing the thought of, is this a heart rate problem, or is that heart rate compensating for another problem? The heart, in most cases, is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. The trick is figuring out what's causing it to escape in the first place. So I hope that helps. If it does, click and subscribe. Hopefully we'll be able to share some more information that helps you along your journey. Take care.